In this week's parashas, parashas Vayeshev, we have the story of Yosef and his brothers. We have the story of Yehuda and Tamar, the story of Yosef and Eshes Potiphar. A lot of famous stories with a lot of famous Moshe lessons in them. I wanted to explore a fairly famous Rashi, one that many people maybe have heard ideas on before. But hopefully we'll have some new insights, and even if not, always good, always bears repeating. So we have the story where Yosef is sold by his brothers, whatever the decision that the brothers made, and they give him over to the Orchat Yishmaelim. The Pasuk tells us in Laman Zayin Chafhei, the Orchat Yishmaelim was Ba Migilad, and the camels were carrying Tsari Velot, Nechos Tsari Velot, that they were carrying different spices. Rashi brings from the Madrish. Why does the Torah tell us what the camels were carrying? To teach me the reward for tzaddikim. Because it's not the derech of Arabs to carry itron v'neif. That's what they carry, and that's a bad smelling stuff. And this caravan had besamim, which was abnormal, so that Yosef shouldn't be harmed from the reachra, from the bad smell of those items. Instead, there should be a good fragrance of the spices. So... Many of the Svarim ask what Rashi is coming to teach us here. What is the, or more why it makes sense. Why would Yosef notice in this situation the difference in the spices? How does it teach us the schar for tzaddikim? When Yosef is going through what he's going through, how does this help him? Imagine this is Yosef, he's the ben zikunim, beloved by his father, now his world is coming crumbling apart. His own brothers have sold him away. He's going down to Mitzrayim, to the worst place, the Mem Teshare Toma. Imagine what he's going through. Is he noticing the spices? Are they making a difference to him? How is it? What's the Pshad and the Rashi? So one point is just the idea that obviously he would notice the difference and it made for a difference and that that's something that's interesting. Ravel Yabaruch Finkel, he brings many different ideas on this Rashi that different schools of Musser and other schools said. And he brings that Slabodka said it as a godless Ha'adam, that he was still sensitive to it. And Navardic said it more as a katnas Ha'adam, that a person would be sensitive to it in this situation. But it's an idea that a human being is sensitive, even in the most difficult straits, that this makes a difference, that this matters to him, that a person could have the most traumatic experience of their life and the little things also contribute, they also matter, and he'll be, he'll appreciate the good smell. Some Chazesel talks about it at length when he talks about the fact that it says, Shemor is Chodesh Aviv, that Pesach was in the spring, because when they were being taken out of Mitzrayim, with all the glory and happiness and greatness that came with living Mitzrayim, the fact that it was in spring also mattered, that they also noticed. So the same word here, that Yosef will pick up on this. And it's more than that. Sarvelio Baruch brings that the school of Kelm, they pointed out the dicto kadin from here. We see the exactness of judgment. Hashem has a plan. For whatever reason, Yosef was destined, to, was decreed to go through this. And at the same time, it was very precise. This amount of suffering he should have. And more than that, he shouldn't have. So he's supposed to have the suffering of being sold and all that, but he shouldn't have the suffering of bad reach. That's not decreed. Interesting, he quotes a Hasidish that the Hasidim say that the Pshad is because smell is something which taps into the Ruchnius of the Neshama. It's a different, it's on a different train than the other senses, and therefore it's something that the Gezer on him was physical suffering, not Ruchnius Nika suffering, so therefore he shouldn't have to smell a bad smell. But the idea is that there's a certain precision here in Hashem's judgment of what's coming to him. And it's something we have to try to be sensitive to in our own life. We have many different challenges, whether it's Parnassa, whether it's health, whether it's family, we have challenges. And whatever reason Hashem has for giving us those challenges, but that not a, not a, not a, not a drop more than what's decreed. And we could pick up there was that good thing and that good thing, hopefully. And it's because that much was decreed and more than that was not decreed. And the springs from that in the mirror of Chaim Shmulevitz took it a, took it a little bit further that this was a special way of Hashem showing a ha'oris uh, ponim, a favorableness towards Yosef. That Yosef should see, gam keilich begeitz ha'moves, so yuro ra ki imadi. Because he sees that when he's in a difficult situation, Hashem makes a weird thing. Hashem makes it that the, that the caravan smells good when it's not supposed to. And it's a certain sign of Hashem showing him that I'm here with you. 
and I'm taking care of you. And it was something that Yosef would be able to be sensitive to and pick up on. And maybe something that we in our own lives, we could try to feel out such things and be sensitive to them. And tells, he says, they explained it with a masha. That there are two people that use, you can have a doctor uses a knife, and you have a murderer uses a knife. But there are certain ways you can see the difference between the, whether you're being stabbed by a doctor or a murderer. And one of them is just, how did the doctor, as they said, how did the doctor take care of the knife? He cleans the knife, he puts, he puts gloves on his hands, he makes sure it's a, clean, it's a clean, sterile experience. And that's what Hashem did with Yosef, that these sufferings were clearly the precise cut of a surgeon, that Hashem is showing the, the gentleness of it in this aspect of it. And it had a good purpose. It was purpose was a constructive purpose. In the end of the day, Yosef was going to experience saving his family from famine. And I'll add, he was going to experience a story with Aisha's Potir, which we once spoke about, is something which is what made him into Yosef at Tzaddik for all time in a certain sense, that sort of that his moment of greatness that elevated him above everything else. And so, in a sense, this was not setting him up for failure, this experience. This was setting him up for success. And Hashem was showing him that through the spices. I think it fits with Rav Chaim Shemulevitz's idea. I think it's all pointing towards an idea that you could say that this spices was not just that he didn't have a bad experience, but it was a sign Hashem was giving him that he could pick up on, that Hashem was here with him, and making something unusual in a time of suffering, giving him something good, which shows him that he's with him and that he's with the, taking care of him with a, and that everything is very precise and, it's, and Hashem has not forgotten about you. Hashem put you in this situation. Hashem is giving you exactly what you need and giving you good along with it. And if Simcha Zissel explains Rashi, this is the Pshat, it teaches the Matan Zchar and Shal Tzadikim. Because if we see that this little thing that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did for Yosef in the sense, maybe not so little, but in a sense it was little, so then it teaches us how much love he has for him, and it gives us an inkling of how much reward is waiting tzaddikim who follow what Hashem wants. Maybe Zohar to learn from this lesson of Yosef about the precision and the love that Hashem sends us with everything that he does, even when he's executing the Midas Adin upon us. Maybe Zohar to be able to find, to develop our Ayin Tova and our Bitochon and develop that ability to find the Reich Habesamim in our own lives, and appreciate that even when we have challenges, it's coming from a loving father who has a precise reason and a precise husband in what he's doing. Wishing you all a wonderful Shabbos.